I suppose I should talk about what I'm doing, maybe, or at least try. Uh, that's kind of difficult, but I'll try. So, this is basically as far as I'll take the drawing, um, because I'm working in a specific kind of style with lots of um, feathering, which is just, feathering is just this, like lines like this, creating shadows and shapes and forms using kind of these sharp lines that, you know, you can do anything with. You can twist them or, you know, they can be really long, like Bernie Wrightson. You might do like really long ones. Um, and you might have used like a nib for lots of that too, which it doesn't really matter how you do it, but many people do it digitally. Um, anyway, so this, what I've done here is I kind of just indicated direction of the lines that I want to take. They're not perfect, but they kind of show like so I know kind of how I want to shape it. Um, and it's more for me, at least for this project at least, it's a style thing, like, like I'm coming, going for a look, but I'm not necessarily thinking, oh, will this be like, is this the most efficient way to do it, or the more, more, most accurate to sculpt it? Um, but yeah, so these lines here are, you know, just guides, so I can do this, kind of figure out where they go, and I might, you know, miss them, and I might have to, like, touch them up and stuff, and it's, you know, it, it can take a while, um, and sometimes you, it's easier to go the other way, where you pull instead of, uh, or throw them, whatever, um, it depends. But usually when I'm starting out with a drawing, I'm kind of just outlining things um, and filling in things that I know for sure will be black. Um, and more things will probably end up black than I realize right now. But I start by like, I know that I want the mouth to be black. Or the inside of the mouth at least. And uh, in this case, I think... I think I'm just gonna do the gums. Well, definitely they're black here, but maybe I might I might lighten it up here because it was gonna just be all black, but I might lighten it up um, as it comes up here. So the light would be hitting it more there, but I don't know. It's again, lots of these decisions are mm, style over substance. Really, like I'm not. It's not like I'm looking at reference right now. Um, or capturing a real human or a real fake, you know, Casper type character or whatever the fuck this is. Um, it's really just an analog character I'm using to kind of make a joke or make a snarky uh, over long, month long joke. So, you know. Um, but, anyways, so yeah, so I try to just outline things. And and that can take a while because because I have to concentrate basically. And right now, because I'm talking and thinking about at least slightly what I'm going to tr try to say, it's more difficult because I have to make other decisions that aren't related to what I'm actually doing. It's like playing guitar and saying what you're playing at the moment, and some people can do that very well if they're like teachers or whatever. Um, but like, I don't really do this kind of thing very often, where I talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. I can usually talk about it after or before, but in the moment, it's difficult. Um, so. I'm going to try to kind of just see how far I get into this before I have to move on, I guess. Like, at some point I'm going to have to turn off the camera and finish the piece because there's bits that are just 
require so much connect, like, or concentration for me um, that I can't, I don't trust myself to do it with a camera on and all this other shit. But anyways, I'm using this, which is basically what all I use when I'm inking these days, which is the Pentel Pocket Brush. And it's just, I think I've talked about it before, maybe, you know, so it has a little cartridge that you can replace in it. Although I actually replaced the ink with some Bombay Black, which is just a different ink. I don't know if it makes a really big difference, but I kind of like it better. It feels slightly thicker, and it's just a preference thing. It doesn't mean anything. I think their the actual ink they have is fine, um, but I just prefer this ink. I, whenever I when I just switched over to it just to try it, I've been liking it more. Um, this is also what paper is this? Let's see. This is Paris Paper for Pens by Borden and Riley. Uh, it's number 234. Smooth, lead-proof, all-purpose paper. Um, I like this paper quite a bit. It's, it is smooth. Um, oh, something fell over. And, um, but yeah, anyways, so this right here is I'm just trying to check the tip. Uh, part of the problem with me using this other ink is that it actually kind of can bind up the end and uh, make the whole brush kind of stiff. And so after a while I kind of have to clean it out more thoroughly. But, uh, especially because a lot, a lot of the time I'm just inking with like the very, very end. Like, you get these fine lines, right? And so the rest of it doesn't move and it kind of starts stiffening up. And so I have to kind of do this and kind of move it around and wipe it off with some paper towels. Um, and it's all of this takes like, you know, it's, I don't think about it and just, I do it because I need it to work. Uh, but sometimes it's frustrating, sometimes I mess up and have to redo lines and like make the lines thicker or thinner, or not thinner so much, because I don't, I don't, I'm not using any whiteout on this, but, um, but yeah, so, anyway, so, let's see, I'm going to just try to work on it, and, um, I guess I'll see if I think of anything else that is worth saying, um, because really it's, it should be pretty self-explanatory, um, As control goes, uh, I know somebody asked me online. They, I mean, they kind of wanted me to do this video where I kind of show my control, and it's really just patience and and kind of going with the flow. Because you know, like you're gonna mess up, and sometimes like your my depth perception will get messed up, and I'll just like get confused how far I am or how, so, how close. So lots of times I'm like doing this. I'm making the same line over until I finally get to the paper and then like I have to you know try to get like a nice point which is which is the ideal um, um, feather feathering thing um, I don't know there's some really good people that do Feathering. If you want to look at some pros, do it. Um, Martin Headrocks, I think is his name, on Instagram. Let me see if I can... Let's go to Instagrundle and see if we can find him. But he... He's very, very good at this. Um, I can't remember people's names because I just suck at that, but um, the guy that did Black Hole the comic about the weird mutant kids. He obviously has like this down to a science. But let's see. Uh, yeah. Martin Head Rocks. Like Martin and then Head and then Rocks, all one 
word together. And if you look him up, he does like lots of really cool. I mean, he has feathering in everything he does. Basically, it's very, it's very tight, very, very precise. Um, very cool stuff. Um, and if you're like a, you know, technique junkie, which you kind of become if you become, if you like any, I mean, you know, if you're into anything, you become a junkie a little bit of a like, just how do you do that? Um, and uh, that's why like artists are often like asking things like, well, what what brush are you using? What's the, you know, what ink? What's the, you know, what kind of coffee do you drink, etc whatever it is that you think helps them make the thing. Not that you'll be able to do the same thing necessarily, because I, I clearly can't do the same thing. So there's always a lot more chaos, I want to say, in what I do. I'm going to say it's chaos. But it's, um, it's like, like, for example, like right now, this, see this, how sloppy these are, like they're not uniform. These right here, right? Those are just like, I need to fix those, and I will, but I probably can't do it on camera. Um, because I'm just thinking about other things and I can't. Yeah, I don't, I don't perform well on command like that. Um, that's why I don't really do things like plain air or, because I, I used to draw more in coffee shops kind of thing with like friends and stuff and just a couple of times and it didn't you know, it wasn't a lot actually it wasn't even that big of a deal but it, it took some people just were like oh what are you doing you know wanted to interact um because obviously it's kind of like a sideshow freak thing where these people were like sitting like several of us in this group and somebody just wanted to talk to us and like ask like what are you doing what, what's that um, and I was just like, I, you know, it just really kind of ruined the moment for me. Like I was not able to continue drawing, for example, it just, you know, and so that's why I draw mostly at home. I, I can sketch other places, but if I'm trying to actually finish something, uh, make something actually good, I need... I need to have some control over my environment, I guess. Because if I, I, I don't, I don't know. It's just a personal thing, maybe. It's the same thing if I like, I'm playing music or something. I can do it with other people, like specifically, as long as those people are there for um, the same reason, right? Like if they're there to play music and then we can collaborate or whatever. But if they're like just sitting there, so let's say, like live, I'm not great live because I can't be in the moment that way. Um, or at least it's very difficult. So if you ever see me play live music someday, you'll be like, Whoa, wow, he must have uh, gotten some medication for his anxiety which will never happen, so. Anyways, um, let's see what else could be interesting about this, or not interesting, but I could just talk about. Uh, I don't know what the design is, what this character is, really. I just wanted an analog for I guess making fun of the idea of people I'm sure you've heard it this, this idea of like oh you know if you're feeling down just smile and your body starts creating these chemicals and um, your mind starts creating chemicals that are like that actually kind of trick you into being more happy right um, and that always bothers me that idea really bothers me and um, 
And sometimes I'm like so like desperate to feel better about whatever the hell's going on that I'm just like, okay, I'll do whatever. But then other times I'm just like, this is a scam. <laughs> and it bothers me. Because generally, obviously, you're like, you're talking to people that are very unhappy and maybe, you know, actually clinically depressed and, and, and could really use real help. And um, when people say things like, well, just, you know, just be mindful. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, or, you know, never just uh, go for a walk, you know. It's, it's just obnoxious and it's very, it's not actually helpful. Because obviously if I could do any of those things, I would do them rather than like feel bad in the moment. That's the whole fucking point. Um, so anyways, the, I'm making fun of lots of that kind of stuff. I mean, I mean, I mean being absurdist and satirical and stuff. And obviously some of it has nothing to do with anything. Um, it's just a joke about smiling. It's not about being happy. It's just about smiling and things that might make you smile. And so this one is about napping. And naps, you know, I do actually like naps. If I could figure out how to nap more, more consistently, it would be good. It could be good. See, like, that was a nice, that was a pretty good row. And this one probably won't be very good. Let's see. Uh, it was alright. It was alright. It was alright. And I think I'm probably gonna come in and crosshatch these to kind of separate him from the pillow. But that's that's later and I'm not gonna get into that yet. I kind of I try to work the whole thing a little bit so that there's no spots that I haven't touched at all. And then I start going in with more and more detail and more and more attention and until finally it's um, you know, it starts coming together and then finally, I don't know, I don't really know what the point is, but at some point I'm just like, well I can't, if I keep adding stuff, it's, I don't, I don't, basically I just decide at some point that I don't need to add anymore. I, I have what I want, I have the value I want or I have the mood, or whatever it is I'm going for. In this case, I kind of like the idea of if I can if I can pull it off. I don't know if I'll be able to. Like this might go al almost completely black here, um, and that will add a lot of weight. But if I can, and if my hand doesn't shake or something, you know, something stupid, then. I kind of would like, I would love to do these like long, you know, really close uh, feathering, just kind of lines to create this like weird, like almost like backlit look. But can I do that? I don't know. It's it's tough. It's a tough one. Um, again, not on camera because it's just. I'd have to practice first, like I'd have to go to a different piece of paper and like, you know, do like long poles and then I'd have to get the t tip to make sure that it's actually like working properly at the moment and then maybe I can do like one, two, and three and then the I need to again deal with the tip and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I don't like, is not obvious and it's kind of just like, you know, it's like... I don't think about it anymore, um, but it's like, but lots of times it's like the details, you know, the details help, um, and when I don't know what to do, I try to like go back to kind of the fundamentals of, you know, value and light and stuff, and I'm like, I don't know what the decisions to make are, and the good one that I adhere to are like, if I'm not sure, I'm kind of like stuck on a spot and it's like kind of halfway between black and white. And maybe it's kind of like messy and I don't know exactly what I'm doing with it. I just, you know, just black it out. You, you just black it out and it's, it's going to be fine. Um, 
and that's it's like a thing that like lots of people have said like um, it comes I don't know if Wally Wood is the first one I mean I'm probably not but you know John Paul Leon go by this kind of idea too and you know lots of smart people and so I you know when you are in that situation you try it and it works you kind of you know adopt the philosophy you're like yeah you know when in doubt black it out when in doubt for example I don't know if this is gonna be black I don't know maybe I think I'll probably at first start with feathering and see how well it goes and if it doesn't go well then I'm gonna black it out um, because again this is more about ooh, the overall kind of like the 30-day joke <laughs> instead of individual piece or a specific thing that I'm trying to show off or something I'm not really trying to show off um, if somebody digs it or whatever, that's great, but, um, you know, and, and as I'm going through these, like, uh, this is, uh, I forget what day this is, or what day this one is going to be, but, you know, there's little, little problems with each one from the sketch phase. Because I did the sketches in like a, um, let's see, if, let me find it here. So I did this in this um, it's a tone uh, tan Strathmore pad. I did it like this. This is these are the some of these, and then you know leather. That one's coming up. Um, anyways, but um, I did them with ballpoint. Um, so there's a certain thing that ballpoint lends itself to. It's um, cross hatching um, and kind of layering value that way and I use a you know I use a ballpoint that is, has a lot of detail and gives me a lot of control but it's different from this like when I redrew this um, and I you know I blew it up and then I traced it uh, light light boxed it and um, I was drawing it with like the intention of being like, well, I'm gonna ink this, and then how am I gonna ink this? If I was like, if I was gonna cross hatch this, for example, <laughs> I'd probably be using like a micron or something, or um, maybe like um, like a nib of some sort. Um, But that's a whole different thing, you know, then I'd be thinking about, and then I would have also drawn it probably cross-hatched to give myself kind of directions and um, ideas of what I want to do, you know. But yeah, there's lots of like things like that I'm like, I'm doing right now that I'm like looking at and going like, ah, fuck, I fucked that up, I'm gonna have to fix that. Just because I am like, my mental s state is like, I'm like, ah, uh, even though there's nobody here, I still feel like somebody's watching me. And it's, um... It's not conducive. So I don't know. But I don't know if this is helpful to anybody, but if it is, that's great. Um, if not, you know, you can always ask me questions or whatever, and I can answer those, but there's not really... I mean, it's just any control I have and anything I achieve is just time and patience and, you know. Thank you.
Yeah, I might pause it and then turn it back on just to like show when it's done because I really want to talk. I'd rather just ink. So back up for these messages.